That's a good question. The, uh, we brought the case in Massachusetts first because of the success of that same-sex marriage case, which was the first one to, to, be, to win. Um, but then we did an analysis of all the states as to their likelihood of success in the courts based on the climate of the courts as well as the state constitutions. And it turns out that New Jersey is the best state in the country. And that the next best one is um, actually Montana and Hawaii. And then, unfortunately, North Carolina is not too high. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So the, the, where I'm going with this is that the school 
has to, um, it's fine for them to allow churches to, to, to use their space for services. If they're allowing the humanist group to do it as well, and they're anybody else, and then they have to figure You wouldn't know that necessarily. Your situation, I'd be happy to, we'd be happy to look into it. Uh, but um, usually, uh, a little pushing on the school will convince them that they can't do it. Um, another example is they used to um, put flyers for materials in kids' backpacks. I don't know if, you, if your parents or people know about that. And, um, <laughs> uh, and then those flyers come sometimes from churches. Well, if they did that, then there's going to be humanist and atheist flyers in there too. <laughs> and as soon as the, church, the school sees that, then they stop the program. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, we just have to kind of be vigilant for those things because it's not appropriate for them to be proselytizing our kids in schools. I mean, that's just wrong. Uh, but um, the best way to challenge it is to show them that they need to be equal to everybody, is what we found. A couple more. Um, you, you first. I think a few months ago there was like a UN resolution that didn't pass that was going to ban blasphemy or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you do work internationally. We do some work level. internationally. In fact, Maggie does a lot of that. I don't know if you want to say a few words. Oh, sure. Well, um, we actually just started getting involved in the um, U.S. State Department um, with regards to uh, atheist discrimination that's happening abroad. Um, some of us have heard about the um, Bangladesh bloggers who have been arrested and some killed actually for what they've been saying online, saying that they don't believe in God. Um, and there are particular cases in Egypt and I think Indonesia where atheists are being arrested. Um, and so we've actually petitioned and had meetings with the uh, U.S. State Department's Office of International Religious Freedom to talk to them about atheist discrimination because they issue an annual report uh, on behalf of you know, hundreds of minority religious groups but they've never mentioned atheist discrimination before. They don't actually count it as a protected class under religious freedom, which, which is what basically we asked them to do last year. So this year we're hoping that that actually translates um, into something in the report. And this report is important because it's used uh, for sanctions against other countries. So that's something that we're doing internationally. And the first report from the, their collegial group. Oh, yeah, so there's, already, um, there's another... Right, and this is actually, so there's the State Department and then there's a group called the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom that's appointed by the President. And this group is another group that we've also been lobbying to recognize atheist discrimination. They just released their first annual report, oh, a couple of weeks ago, and they've mentioned atheist discrimination for the first time. So they're receptive, I think, that the people there want to be. Um, I think that we haven't been organized enough to actually utilize the facilities before. <laughs> um, and there's been some discrimination, some prejudice among some of the folks in the past. But today, I think the, the, the road is getting clearer and clearer uh, for us to be more involved internationally. Uh, this, and this blasphemy issue, obviously we want our State Department to, to not be uh, trying to allow blasphemy initiatives to go through. So that, that specific item. Uh, so far, it seems you've been reactive. Do you have any plans to be proactive? Well, I guess it sort of depends on how you look at it. I, uh, I think of this under God case as very proactive in that we're trying to uh, move forward that envelope um, of church-state separation that exists today to include more things uh, that it didn't, hasn't since well, many decades at least. Uh, but I know what you're saying, and it's true. You know, we're, the religious right uh, had been very powerful in the 1990s, and then you know through the moral majority and Christian coalition, and then inculcated into government with George W. Uh, and they're still there as part of the problem. You know, we have a lot of situations where there are government earmarked funds for all kinds of things that are inappropriately religious. You know, the faith-based initiatives include funding for uh, programs where for, for um, trying to help people who are suffering from uh, addictions, for instance, that require them to um, give over their um, selves to Jesus Christ in order to continue with the program. I mean, that's higher power. Yeah, I and mean, that's taxpayer-based stuff. Um, and so, there's so much to fight. It's hard to be on the pro offense, but that we're, it's, 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 we're so much on the defense. <laughs> it's true, but um, we look for opportunities like that. Oh yeah, we do have the Kids Without God website. That was the uh, ad campaign just this last year um, that Maggie mentioned. 
uh, pointed to kidswithoutgod.com where um, young parents and kids can go on there and find good information for, um, to, uh, that's the first time that we kind of packaged it because if we looked out there for information on, you know, if you're a Christian kid or a Jewish kid or a Muslim kid, there are tons of websites and videos that it's made for you to learn about your tradition. And there was nothing like that for non-theist kids before until we did this site. So that, that could be a, an example, yeah. Uh, you had mentioned before the uh, avoidance of bad legal precedent and it's informing a big part of your strategy. That's right. Uh, I'm curious, and I think that's very prudent, I'm curious if that's part of just the Humanist Association strategy or if there's been any discussion or agreements with other secular groups. We're about trying that. to do that. Yeah, I mean, we, um, um, legal groups are hard to get along. <laughs> um, uh, historically, I, I think it's because when you bring a lawsuit, you know, there's a plaintiff that's bringing that lawsuit. Um, and that one gets all the press and publicity and things. And so legal groups kind of are secretive amongst each other. Yes. And we're trying to bring inquiry in ways to try to um, move our strategy along in a cohesive way. In fact, we'll be meeting in the fall to discuss that as a group. Uh, but um, but it's, a, it's a little bit of a slow process. Um, but you're right, that's something we need to do. Um, if we knew we were all on the same page, we could avoid things like uh, bad precedent in any cases. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's been great talking to you all. Okay. Um, exactly. One of the first things you should do is become a member of the AHA if you haven't already. That's uh, very important if you want to help the work that they do. Also, become active and support your local groups. So I know that Charlotte Hebeus and Agnostics can use some donations. We're trying to bring more speakers in, and uh, not all of them are as generous as Roy and Maggie are here. So we do need to raise some funds if you'd like to see more of this kind of uh, uh, venue and uh, these kind of talks. Uh, so thank you very much for coming out. I really appreciate it. We have a table full of really cool stuff over here. A few books left. Uh, we have some bumper stickers, some car decals. They're all for sale, and yes, we can take credit cards. Um, I also want to give a donation. Do you take credit cards? <laughs> um, also, if uh, you're interested, some of us are going to go to a restaurant and or a bar and have some food and drinks to celebrate. So uh, stick around. We'll decide on a place to go if you're interested. Thanks again. Thank you.